So I checked the order and the patient um, is, the practitioner has indicated that the patient may have their IV discontinued and removed. So I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that that is an appropriate order and the patient will not need that anymore. This patient is going home, so we're gonna remove the IV saline lock. So I'm gonna make sure that um, I have all my supplies that I'm gonna need before I enter the room and basically all I'm gonna need is some tape um, and then possibly an alcohol wipe and a sterile two by two gauze. Um, in some instances you can use a, um, a skin adhesive remover if the tape is on, you know, very, very tight and you wanna get it off without pulling skin, you can use that as well to remove the glue that's on that. Now when I come into the patient's room, I make sure I provide pri pri privacy. I'm going to wash my hands, introduce myself, and identify my patient. So I use two identifiers, full name and date of birth, check it with the electronic medical record, and I'm gonna to explain to the patient what I'm doing. So I tell the patient that um, the provider has um, indicated that I may remove the IV because they're going home and make sure that they understand what I'm doing. I'm just gonna raise the bed to an appropriate height, working level height. Put my side rail down. And I'm gonna go ahead and look at the IV site. So just kind of important to note your assessment of it so that you can document that prior to removing that. Again, this site looks good. It's um, no swelling, no redness, no drainage. The dressing is intact. So now I'm gonna go ahead and wash my hands and put gloves on. And if the patient has any um, bleeding tendencies or is on anticoagulant therapy, you are gonna know that the patient may bleed a little bit more than if someone was not in that situation. So you would wanna hold pressure for a longer period of time, um, you know, and just check it more frequently, even after you have removed it, just to make sure that they're not um, having any problems with bleeding through. All right, so now I'm just gonna open up my gauze so I have it available. <coughs> And then we have to work on pulling off the um, adhesive that's on here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and note that I'm gonna loosen the edges. Sometimes they're pretty sticky. Like I said, you could use an adhesive remover if needed. You're gonna try to, um, as you're removing, secure the IV catheter. So once I've loosened it, then I wanna make sure that I am pulling the dressing off in the same direction that my IV is inserted. If you go against the direction, then you um, risk pulling it out prematurely. So I remove the dressing. Again, everything looks good. I grab my gauze, I place it over the insertion site, and then I'm just gonna tell the patient I'm removing it. Once I remove it, I'm looking at the integrity of the um, catheter, making sure that it is all there and it's intact, and also to make sure that it doesn't have any drainage that may be suspicious of infection. If there is any drainage, make sure that you um, culture that. Okay, so I'm putting pressure on the gauze, and now I'm gonna get some tape up ready to secure it. So I go ahead and I secure the gauze. And um, in some instances, you can also wrap it with a coal band um, to hold it in place. But um, in this point, I'm just taping it. So now that I'm done with that, I'm just telling the patient that just to keep an eye on that if they notice anything wet or draining to make sure they notify me. Remove my gloves. Put the side rail up quick. Lower the bed. Make sure the patient is comfortable. And then I'm gonna go ahead and wash my hands. And I wanna document that I removed the IV. And then um, I made sure that I checked the tip of the IV to make sure that it was intact. I also wanna document that it was intact and there was no drainage on there. And I will 
um, also document how the patient tolerated the, the procedure, and um, that's it.